Hello, Wildlings. Colin here, the Wild CEO. How much fish roll should you take per day? We get this question all the time. It's a hard one to answer because it's nuanced. And any answer that requires a nuanced answer, when people really want just a definite this much, check off that box, it gets complicated. So I'll do my best to share some of these different points about how much fish oil to take, omega-3, et cetera. And then you can make an informed decision based on talking with your doctor and any medications you're on and complications with that. So definitely consult your doctor as well as how much fish you're currently eating, what your lifestyle is like, what your diet like, et cetera. So fish oil, omega-3 fatty acids may relieve several health conditions according to quite a bit of research. They're pretty well established as good for you. That's all I'm gonna say on that because today's video is about how much to take, okay? I will also say that make sure you're taking an extremely high quality fish oil, ideally cold process because omega-3s can be fragile. And when they oxidize, they're not doing your body any favors. You don't want to buy oxidized rancid fish oil. So effective dosage range, they vary widely, but some research suggests that 200 to 4,000 milligrams, somewhere in that range, depending on a bunch of variables, is an ideal daily dose. Of course, you should be eating fatty fish a couple times a week, salmon, sardines, mackerel, anything that is deliciously fatty to get those omega-3s. I would generally avoid lean fish for the most part. I mean, it's fine to have here and there, but if you're trying to get omega-3, you want fatty fish. Also, eating fish in general, you have to be concerned with heavy metals, mercury particularly, but also other things that are in the sea from our pollution that gets into fish and that gets into your body as a result. You have to watch your fish intake, and that's where actually a fish oil supplement can come in because through the molecular distillation process, in the case of wild fish oil, not all fish oils are made this way, but you get a removal of any heavy metals. You also get testing to make sure there's no heavy metals inside that fish oil you're consuming. Generally, of course, I'm speaking generally here because I don't know how every company does what they do, but when you're eating fish, there's no test and there's no distillation process to remove heavy metals. So that's another benefit of fish oil. If mercury or heavy metals are a concern, taking more fish oil while watching maybe once a week fish intake or every so often, you can still get the omega-3s without the heavy metals. The important thing with fish oil is make sure it has EPA, DHA, and if you can find it, DPA, which is a rare form of omega-3 that we also have in wild fish oil, which you can actually find links below. So official dosage guidelines, like I said, they're all over the place. Some mainstream health organizations, which I don't necessarily think you should trust or even pay attention to, but we'll just put it out there, have released their own expert opinions but they vary considerably. Simply put, there's no official recommended daily allowance. That being said, most health organizations agree that 250 to 500 milligrams is an effective daily dose. Now, the key here is to make sure that you're getting that in the form of DHA or EPA and not just the capsule itself. So this is something that you'll find a lot. A gel cap might say 1,000 milligrams, but then inside of that, the omega-3 content might be 100 milligrams or 150. What you're trying to adjust is not the 1,000 milligram serving size, which includes the coating of the capsule, but the actual EPA and DHA inside. So go based on those numbers and multiply or divide to get your daily intake. So for example, if you have a 1,000 milligram capsule and there's 100 milligrams of of EPA in it, then you would actually need to take between two and five of those capsules. Make sense? The key is to read the label because there is so much variety when it comes to fish oil. I mean, some have lots of omega-3, some are triple strength, some have less, et cetera. So keep in mind when you're adjusting the dosage of the capsule, the only thing you're really paying attention to is what's inside the capsule on that omega-3 line. That's what you're trying to adjust. So what about pregnant women? Research shows that omega-3 fatty acids, especially DHA, are vital before, during, and after pregnancy. Of course, consult your doctor, but it's pretty well established that around 200 milligrams a day of DHA during pregnancy and breastfeeding is ideal in addition to if you're already taking a regular dose. Several global and national organizations have published guidelines for infants and children ranging from 50 to 100 milligrams per day of combined EPA and DHA. So can you take too much fish oil? Yes, you can. So the FDA, which I don't trust, you probably shouldn't either, claims that omega-3 supplements containing EPA and DHA are safe if doses don't exceed 3,000 milligrams per day. Now keep in mind, that could be a lot of capsules because you're going for the DHA and the EPA content. You're not going for the overall gel caps. So in the case of a 1,000 milligram capsule with 100 EPA and DHA in it, you're going to actually need to take something like 30 capsules to hit 30 milligrams a day. For most people, that's not viable. You're not going to do that. And so you're going to be well under the overdosage range. And so you're very unlikely to get anywhere close to overdosing on something like this. So omega-3s can cause blood thinning. So if you're taking medications related to blood whatsoever, you need to consult your doctor. And if you start taking a lot of it and you find like you're bruising easy or maybe you got a small cut and it's not really clotting, things like that. You wanna be careful for things like that. So pay attention to how much fish oil you're taking and consider dialing it back if you have any issues like that. The other thing to keep in mind is a lot of the overdosage of fish oil is actually a vitamin A 
dosage. This kind of goes back to a lot of the old cod liver oil supplements, the original that came on the market that had vitamin A usually as a preservative. And some of these dosage requirements were based on this assumption that all fish oil has vitamin A in it, but most fish oil does not actually have vitamin A. So look on the label. If your fish oil doesn't have vitamin A, then you don't have to worry about the vitamin A being an issue. And you might be able to adjust the ranges a little bit based on what you're trying to achieve. So in conclusion, your omega-3 needs are going to vary based on diet, lifestyle, current health, goals, and weight. This is where personal testing, we're also consulting your doctor or medical professional, and especially if you're taking any medication, be sure to do that. But what you should take is 100% up to you and your health. I can't give you a statement about what I might've done or someone else might've done and tell you what to do. So it's very important to account for all the variables and test, pay attention to what your body's telling you. If you're having some adverse effects and dial it back or stop it completely, et cetera. Again, the ranges of health professionals is somewhere between 250 milligrams and 3000 milligrams of combined EPA and DHA. So if that cap, the thousand milligram cap had 100 EPA and then 100 DHA, that would actually be 200. So you want to add that together, at least for this recommendation. If you have any questions below, more than happy to answer them. You can also send us an email info at wildfoods.co. And if you want to get a high quality premium cold processed fish oil, head over to wildfoods.co and use code wildceo for 12% off your entire order. Thanks for watching.